In this video, I am going to explain anatomical relationship of thorax and shoulder girdle. You know, many people see body parts as individual structure. Let's say when somebody evaluates breathing and ribcage, they only see ribcage. Okay. And when somebody has a shoulder pain, maybe they only see shoulder. But if you look carefully, ribcage and shoulder are connected for many ways, like they are connected as bony structures. They are connected by muscles, like shoulder girdle muscles. So if you see these parts as one unit, you can see more new idea for your uh, clinical experience. Okay, I am going to explain the bony connection and muscle connection first. Okay, anyway, thorax and shoulder girdle are connected. But how? One way to see this connection is bone and joint, like this. Say this is sternum, this is clavicle and this is scapula this is humerus sternum and clavicle are connected by sternoclavicular joint clavicle and scapula are connected by a chromioclavicular joint of course humerus and scapula are connected by shoulder joint so blue color is bone yellow color is joint Let's say if somebody got fracture on clavicle, that can affect, of course, scapula and shoulder. Or the other way, clavicle and sternum. If somebody has a dislocation on shoulder, that may affect, of course, for elbow joint or clavicle and sternum. See, this unit is connected by bone and joint simple enough right now next thing is muscle let's say this is pectoralis minor pectoralis minor this muscle attaches on rib three four five and coracoid process to be simple it's on rib cage and scapula what happens if this muscle gets tight? It both can aggravate movement of ribcage and scapula, right? It's natural because this muscle attaches on two places, ribcage and coracoid process. So this muscle can inhibit breathing because it attaches on ribcage and scapula movement it's very simple but people oftentimes forget muscle attaches on more than two places let's say this is serratus anterior this muscle also attaches on ribcage and scapula when serratus anterior gets tight that inhibits movement of ribcage and scapula, right? Then if serratus anterior gets tight, that can inhibit movement of breathing, ribcage. Plus, that may affect pectoral spina because this muscle also attaches on ribcage. If serratus anterior inhibits movement of ribcage, that may affect pectoralis minor right this is very very simple this is anterior view of thorax so let's move on to posterior view okay this is posterior view one muscle I pick up today is trapezius trapezius attaches on occiput cervical spines and thoracic spines Plus, of course, scapula. 
Okay? When this muscle gets tight, that oftentimes inhibits movement of scapula. This is very, very common. That is why you have very tight shoulder. But if you look the other way, that might inhibit movement of cervical spines and thoracic spines. That's very common as well. But I don't know why, but people focus on scapula more than thoracic spines and cervical spines regarding to trapezius. Yes, of course, this muscle is important for scapular movement. However, if you look the other way, trapezius also inhibits cervical spines and thoracic spines, of course, for occiput. Now, when this place is not moving, maybe scapula doesn't move. Because, you know, this is trapezius. It attaches on spines and scapula. So, if scapula does not move, maybe ribcage doesn't move. Because many muscles attach on scapula. Then it goes to ribcage. Do you see this relationship? Spines to scapula. Now you can go to ribcage from these muscles. That's why you shouldn't separate shoulder girdle and ribcage. They are all one unit. That is why this place is so, so important. But this is like an external connection. It's outside of body. Where's thorax? Thorax is ribcage. What's inside of ribcage? Now let me explain inside part of thorax. Okay, this is rib cage. What is inside in thorax? That's lung, right? Lung, lungs, and heart. These organs are covered by membrane. That is pleura and pericardium. Pericardium, this is membrane for heart. Pericardium and pleura. Pleura is membrane of lungs. What happens if these membranes get tight? This cause is multiple, maybe from asthma, maybe from car accident, the physical trauma on ribcage. Many things can tighten up these membranes. Anyhow, what happens if this membrane gets tight? That may inhibit breathing, because this is inside part of thorax. Of course, this inhibits breathing. Why is breathing restricted? Because ribcage doesn't move. What happens, ribcage doesn't move. That may affect sternum. That may affect clavicle. Then, this connection can affect shoulder movement. Okay? Then, again, inside part of thorax is tight. Now, ribcage doesn't move. There are various muscles attached on ribcage, scapula, and cervical spines. Okay? Tightness of inside part of thorax can affect outside. Of course, Tightness of outside can affect inside. This is like yin-yang relationship. So it's like a plus or minus relationship. If one side gets tight, that can affect the other way. This is very important relationship. I love thorax and cervical spines and shoulder girdle. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. See you next video.